guys, it's Super Ivy, the hashtag hero. Today, we are going to be interviewing Miss Dana Garrison. Thanks for joining, guys. We're going to be talking to Dana Garrison today. I don't know if some of you guys are following her or are in her um, Periscope Love Tribe, which is also really cool if you are. Today, we're going to find out all about that, how you can be a part of her movement, and on top of that, a little bit of biz coaching on the side because she's also a business coach for six-figure earners. So this should be really interesting. Thanks, everybody, for joining in. And I'm going to introduce Dana right now. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. All right, guys. So as I was saying, Dana is the founder of Love Tribe on Periscope, which is a growing online community. She's grown this community so quickly. It's amazing. Um, I can't wait to find out more about how she's been able to do that and what she plans to do with it. During the Periscope, we'll also take any of your questions. First question that I'd love to ask for you is, what is the Periscope Love Tribe? So, <laughs> um, Love Tribe is an online community of Periscopers that's built so that everybody can help each other out and help each other grow on Periscope. I founded Love Tribe because when I first got started on Periscope, I had a rough time. I had no comments, no hearts, and then I got trolled. And I could quickly see why people give up on Periscope and throw in the towel. And the thing is, you don't want to throw in the towel right now. Live streaming is where it's at right now. Periscope is where it's at right now. The opportunities are huge. Not only can you grow your list and grow your business, if that's what you're up to, but there's so many ways that you get noticed and featured. For example, I wrote an article on Periscope for Business and got published in Huffington Post in a snap. And I co-authored that with a woman named Skye because of a connection that I made through Periscope and Love Tribe. I was then featured on Huffington Post Live talking about Periscope for Business and talking about why brands want to be working with us periscopers and influencers um, and kind of basically work together in collaborations, I was featured on that because of Periscope. And you guys can start getting sponsors uh, for your shows on Periscope. You guys can start monetizing. I was able to monetize. I was able to get a sponsor within the first two weeks when, after I hit the ground running with Periscope. You can get speaking engagements. I've been offered to speak all over the place because of Periscope. So. Basically, Periscope Love Tribe is an online community that helps you grow on Periscope a lot faster and a lot easier. It's built so that you can find other Periscopers to buddy up with. So, for example, you mm -hmm. can grab a Perry buddy for the day who will come to your show, give you hearts, give you comments, share the broadcast so you have more live viewers. You can also get a lot of hearts inside Love Tribe. So right now there's a way to get 12,000 hearts on every single replay. So that means if you do three shows a day, 36,000 hearts on replays alone. And then of course we've got posts so that if you're about to go live, you can let people know in the group that you're about to go live and if they're available, they can come in and support you. There's gonna be a way for you to start getting customers and clients from within Inside Love Tribe and start making money just by being able to have an ecosystem within Love Tribe where anytime you want to hire somebody, you hire somebody that is able to help you out within Love Tribe. So we start to have an economic system within inside Love Tribe. And then there's a way to get featured in the Love Tribe Pass the Cast that we're starting so that you can be a featured scoper and, of course, get more exposure, get more hearts, get more viewers, get more followers. And, of course, you get a lot more followers inside Love Tribe because everyone in Love Tribe follows everyone else in Love Tribe. That is the gist <laughs> of Love Tribe. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. So I was looking at some of your stats. Your current following is looking like 7,733 followers and upwards of 3 million hearts, which is super incredible. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And I want to know, like, how do you feel that Periscope stacks up against the other social media outlets? And are you currently on any of the other social media outlets? Um. I find that Periscope, in terms of other social media outlets, is just head and shoulders above other platforms to be on right now. Mm -hmm. um, because Periscope is live, because you can actually not only see the person in real time in their own environment, but you can interact with them, you can ask questions. Because there's that sort of in the moment, raw authenticity and real deep connection, you can actually connect with people at such a deeper level, at such a faster level than a lot of other platforms. Because if you think about Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, a lot of that is images or words, right? It's text. Maybe they can really feel people deeply, which is fantastic. Because in terms of building yourself, if you're a business 
um, building yourself if you're wanting to start a business, people start to know, like, and trust you really quickly through Periscope. And you can't get that on the other platform. You can grow so much quicker on Periscope than you can on a lot of the other platforms right now. Awesome. And I'm sure if everyone follows you, they can find all, all of the ways to do that for sure. You actually have some of my favorite shows. You've done some really good business coaching related scopes. I really like the one about refining your elevator pitch. That was one of my favorite. In terms of being a business coach, how were you able to break through the six-figure ceiling? Well, <laughs> that is that comes with an interesting story. So about, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago, I came down with a chronic illness that nobody could diagnose. And I went to doctor after doctor, and no one can figure out what it was or how to help me. And it mm -hmm. gave me chronic fatigue, insomnia, cognition issues. And over the years, I realized I was just going to have to get on with life. There was nothing I could do. And so eventually, I became a social psychologist. And it was during my time as a therapist that I learned <laughs> that our conscious mind is responsible for about 10% of what shows up in our lives. And our unconscious habits and patterns are responsible for about 90% of what shows up in our lives. Wow. So as a therapist, I was barking up the wrong tree. So I went out and I started studying, how do you create change? How do you transform people's unconscious habits and patterns? And so I studied that work and I took the best of the best of the best and I developed something called family entanglement work and childhood re-imprinting work. Mm -hmm. And I used that work on myself actually first. I was using it for my health issues and symptom after symptom just lifted, just went away and never came back. And that blew me away because in a decade of searching and looking for answers to get rid of the health stuff, that was the only thing that helped me. And so I took that work back to my clients and a lot of clients who had been stuck for like 30 years with certain problems in their lives finally started getting the breakthroughs that they wanted. And so then I thought, can I use this work for business? And I started working on myself and my, my own money blocks and my own business blocks using wow. this work. So basically family entanglements looks at the generational patterns that we inherit around business, around success, around money. And Childhood Imprints looks at the imprints that we pick up in our childhood that are related to things like how we feel about ourselves, our self-worth, things around success as well. And so I worked on those things inside of myself, and I was able to grow a sold-out coaching practice in a month and a half and leave my day job and then break through six figures in nine months, wow. which totally blew me away. I wasn't even shooting for that at the time. <laughs> And really, my two secret sauces were, one, using that sort of mindset work that I developed when I was a psychologist, and number two, figuring out what are the basically core essentials of business that give you the most ROI, that give you the most return on your investment of time. So basically, how do you jumpstart cash flow? How, what are the activities you need to do to get your cash flow to jump to that next level the quickest? And those were my two, two secret sauces, basically, that helped me have those breakthroughs. And in essence, that's, that's how I got there. That's how I broke through. Amazing. I am the chosen one to know what was one of your aha moments. One of my aha moments. You don't need... Some people think that you can't have any negative thoughts as you're going along, mm -hmm. that if you start thinking negatively, you might start attracting negatively. And I think being a human, you're going to have some down days. You're going to have some down weeks. You're going to have doubts. And I think the secret sauce there is to notice that they are doubts, to notice that the, the negative thoughts and the doubts are happening, to not let yourself believe them. Mm -hmm. like if, you're, if you notice you're feeling tired, if you notice you haven't gotten enough sleep and you start to have some negative thoughts or doubts, that's fine. They showed up in your brain. Don't believe them. You know, anytime that I'm tired, I always tell myself, all right, don't listen to your thoughts right now. Yeah, they're passing by your head. I know you're having them. Don't believe them. Don't make any decisions right now. <laughs> right? Don't but like give credence to those thoughts and just keep going. So one of the biggest things that I've actually learned as I've been coaching people over the years in business is it's not actually how smart you are. It's not about how intelligent you are. You don't have to be in Mensa to have a, a successful business. What it is is you have to keep going. And every time some failure happens or something doesn't go your way, you just have to keep going regardless and be willing to learn every day and put actions into play every single day and just keep going. If you're willing to take the right actions 
and then work it and do it every day, you can grow. But, it, but you do have to learn how to take the right actions, right? Which ones are the right ones to take? Which ones waste your time? My audience is a lot of millennials. I want to know if you have any special advice that you'd give to young entrepreneurs to do the same. Yeah, definitely. Um, number one, first things first, hire a coach or a mentor. Mm -hmm. Do not try to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> I actually started out that way and I tried to do it myself. You know, all us DIYers. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do some research online. I'm going to read some books. I can figure this out. And what happened was I wasted a lot of time, mm -hmm. a lot of time, and I mean a few years, and I left a lot of money on the table. In those years that I could have been getting clients a lot, I, I could have been making money and getting clients, I wasn't because I was determined to try to do it myself, <laughs> and, um, and there's no point. Other people have already done it. They figured out how to do it. They can teach you the shortcuts. So usually a mentor or a coach, um, as they've grown their business, it probably took them some number of years to get there. When you hire them, you can succeed in a fraction of the time that it took your coach to get there because they're teaching you all the shortcuts, they're teaching you all the ways around the obstacles, <laughs> and so that's what you want. You want the shortcuts, so find someone who's done it, um, find somebody who's done it before you, and, and get them to you know hire them and learn their method. Um, and, and again, what I said earlier, don't let yourself get discouraged. You're not supposed to succeed the first time. It takes time to become successful. So if you're noticing that it is taking time, continue to invest in yourself and your business and your education. Because I know here in the, in the States, at least, we invest in our college education. We'll put hundreds of thousands of dollars even into our college education. And then after college, we stop taking classes a lot yeah. of the time. We don't invest in much in our, as much in our business education as we did in our college education. So I have found it's really the same. You've got to continue to invest in yourself from the perspective of business this time. And not necessarily an MBA because they don't necessarily teach you entrepreneurship in this format. Mm -hmm. It's much more so finding people who have done it, who are now coaches who can teach you how they did it. Amazing. That's so true. Thank you so much for that information. I think it'll come in handy yeah, for bet. a lot of our um, viewership. Do you have any arch enemies in your life? Um, a lack of sleep is my arch enemy. So <laughs> what I mentioned earlier about um, you know your negative thoughts getting the best of you. In the past, I had you know I would get I would, ha I would get tired. I wouldn't get enough sleep. And what happens is your thinking changes, your mindset changes, your thoughts change. And if you don't realize that you're in one of those less good states, you start to listen to your own thinking. And then you start to make decisions from that place. And that is a huge mistake. I have made many you know, poor decisions from that place. Things like throwing in the towel too early, giving up, thinking it's not going to work, mm -hmm. starting to change. You know, one of the things that people do is they, they, they throw in the towel too early when they could have been successful, you're three feet from gold, if you've ever heard of that topic or that um, saying. You're three feet from gold, and you throw in the towel, but you were right there if you would have just kept going. And a lot of times it's when you get too tired and you start to listen to your own thoughts of like, ah, this isn't working, I'm going to scrap it. And I'm not saying you should never scrap things, but a lot of people give up too soon because it really does take some serious elbow grease. So you've got to be willing to hustle, and you've got to be willing to work it and learn the right actions. And if you're willing to do all of that, then success is in your future. Do you have any books that you would recommend other people to read? Um, I really love The 4-Hour Work Week. So oh, if you guys haven't checked that out yet, that's from Tim Ferriss. And when I first started out my business, I started out as a live event company, and then I moved into a sort of coaching and consulting company, and have since moved into an online education company because of some of the principles that I learned when I read that book. Uh, that book helps you really start to think about how to live a freedom lifestyle. And so I had originally set up my business so that I was tied to where I live, San Francisco. I wasn't able to travel much. I wasn't able to leave. I wasn't able to have a lot of freedom because all of my business took place in person at live events or in-person face-to-face for coaching. Mm -hmm. And that's not a way that you can scale. That's not a way that you can help a lot of people and make a huge impact on the planet because everyone has to fly to you or you've got to fly to them. Yeah. And it's just, it's not a good use of time. <laughs> and so that book really starts to help you think about 
how can you start to scale? How can you start to automate? And I suggest that you guys read it before you set up your business or before you get too far along in your business like I did, where you in essence, I in essence, set it up in such a way that I had to then break it back down and rebuild it again because I set it up in such a way where I didn't have that freedom. So I recommend checking that out so you can start thinking in terms of how can I scale? How can I automate? How can I have a bigger reach and impact without tying myself down too much? Totally. I've been wanting to read that book for so long. I'm so glad you brought that up again. <laughs> Do you have any quotes that you personally live by, like hashtag heroic philosophies? <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, there's actually a couple. Abraham Lincoln said, always bear in mind that your own resolution to succeed than anything else and or than any other that that desire to succeed that resolution i find when i've worked with people over the years is the, the difference between the people that are successful and the people that aren't winston mm -hmm. churchill said uh, success is not final failure is not fatal it's the courage to continue that counts and so that ability to keep going, regardless of what life throws at you, the obstacles that life throws at you, like random illnesses that you can't find a, a diagnosis for or a cure to, or you know, just the unexpected, right? There's all kinds of obstacles that every one of us has that we need to find paths around. And I'm here to tell you, you can definitely find ways around pretty much any obstacle. I actually help a lot of people navigate around their obstacles so they can still have the life they want um, even when there's stuff in your way so yeah that courage to continue is what counts so true oh wow thank you so much for spending the time to talk with us today if anybody has any questions for dana feel free to ask away at this point in time oh last question someone has one more question okay, okay. what's what's your last question um, any favorite mentors or authors? Goodness. Um, favorite mentors or authors? That's a good question. I would say a good person to check out is Pat Flynn, who has the Smart Passive Income podcast. Yes, Pat. He's got <laughs> such a great personality, and he's so fun. Um, Jamie Tardy also does The Eventual Millionaire as a mm -hmm. podcast, so that's really great as well. And in terms of authors, my goodness, I do love me some Malcolm Gladwell because he does begin to teach you the differences in how to think, right? He's got a, a book called Blink about our, about our human ability to assess a situation or assess a person really quickly. He's got a book about the tipping point, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which has to do with when things seem to be able to um, have their breakthrough and start to succeed and you know, what, how are some of those tipping points created. So those are some fun authors that I've really enjoyed myself as well. Cool, guys. So definitely check out the Periscope Love Tribe, periscopelovetribe.com. Follow at Dana Garrison here on uh, Periscope and on Twitter. She's also on there, guys. And she's got a lot of giveaways. Her mailing list is awesome. I'm on all of these things. I can attest to them. So thank you again for speaking with us on this interview. Say bye to Dana, everybody. All right, guys, thanks for joining, and um, I hope you enjoyed our interview with Dana. Oh, happy faces and smiles. Thanks. Okay, guys, so I will catch you on the next adventure on my next scope. For now, this has been Super Ivy the Hashtag Hero. Hero out.